When Jesus says to do something, do it. Period. You'll never go wrong. Ever, ever, ever go wrong. When, you know, if I say to do it, forget it. <laughs> you know, just ignore it. If Jesus says to do it, do it. You got to do it immediately. Um, where's all this go? Um, can we have a timeout now and have a family meeting? Um, it's just kind of with, um, with kind of, it's a scary moment for me because in July I'm going to be moving to another church. And um, that's uh, 14 years here. Um, wow, isn't that incredible? Isn't that wonderful? Um, we're so thankful for that. Lydia was two weeks old when we moved here, and now is going into high school next year. Um, and so we're, we're, ex extremely, um, we're extremely sad about old things changing. We're um, in the business of following Jesus. Remember a couple weeks ago we had a, a sing kind of time in here, and we were singing hymns, and I told you last week how important that was to me because one of the songs... Um, was one I just I woke up in the middle of the night singing. Uh, so Wednesday night I woke up singing the last song that we sung in the 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 singspiration time, and it was where He leads me I will follow. Where He leads me I will follow. And I woke up singing it. Where He leads me I will follow. And uh, the next day I found out He was leading. Um, so um, He is. Um, He's leading me to uh, Columbia City. Uh, it's, uh, it's far enough to not be close, <laughs> and yet close enough to not be far. <laughs> uh, that is a fantastic thing. Um, here is, I remember when I moved here, one of the first things we did was we went around to all the um, places and began to meet families. and. Like, people would say, well, I'm related to this person, I'm related to that person, I'm related to this person. And, and I remember at one, stopping the meeting and going, this church is one step away from incest. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's like everybody is related to everybody. And, uh, and 14 years later, I'm related here, you know. You know, like Caleb married into the place. Caleb's a pickerel. Everybody's a pickerel in this place, you know. Like, you're either a pickerel or a bailey in here, you know. It's like... Um, you know, it's just like everybody's related and like this has literally become, um, it, this is home. It's like we'll, because of the ages of our children, we'll always be home. It's uh, been a fantastic home. Um, I would describe it, never thought of it until this morning as 300 nice people in one grump, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And Judy, Judy's the grump, you know. <laughs> and uh, Judy, Judy just serves and loves. And when you get your grumpy person loving you, how what, how how life gets life gets really good. Um, so George, kind of come up. And George um, is on the staff parish committee. We need to talk a little bit about what happens now. Kind of what the process is. Um, is this on? So, um, once again, can I remind you that I've got like five months, um, which is longer than many of your pastors have been here before. So, yeah, I, got, I still got five months, um, a long time, and we still want to do, want to do great things. But where, where are we at in the process? Or? Well, the, the process uh, is we met uh, Thursday night, and we're officially uh, informed of this on, uh, on Thursday night uh, that... Uh, the, the district superintendent was here, talked to us about it, uh, told us what we need to do, and we're going to meet with him this week. Uh, one of the, the real advantages I think we have is <clears throat> this is very, very early in the process. Uh, I think he told us there are probably 80 churches that change pastors every year out of about 1,100 in the district. Um, the first few have changed, and. Uh, we still have uh, a, a probably uh, 1,050 churches uh, out there that, uh, that have pastors we might be able to call on. And so we're, we're very early in the process, which, which really gives us an opportunity to, uh, to, to get one of the best pastors for this church available. We're going to spend some time with him on, on one, one night this week. 
uh, tell him what we're looking for in a pastor. Uh, and there's a five-page questionnaire that he's given us that uh, we're going to fill out. Uh, and he's going to fill out. We're going to, we're going to fill out and then bring those questionnaires, each one of us, each member of the staff parish committee. Uh, and I'm confident uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is I have uh, absolute faith in our DS. If any of you ever met uh, Larry Whitehead, uh, he's an amazing man. Uh, in fact, I told him the only way we'd let Fred go is if he would come and be our pastor, but he, uh, <laughs> he didn't want to do that, but uh, great guy. And I think he has the best interest of us in our church at heart. Uh, and I'm very, very confident that this is going to be a positive thing. Uh, uh, the, uh, it's difficult. I know that last week when I found out, I think Fred called me Tuesday morning, and uh, uh, I remembered something that he has taught me over the years. Uh, he said that when things are, when he's had a bad day, when things are kind of down, he just sits back and closes his eyes and says, I trust you, Jesus. I trust you, Jesus. And I've repeated that phrase a lot this week uh, because uh, I don't know if how many of you remember 14 years ago where we were at as a church. Uh, it was not very good. We were having some difficulties. And today we are standing firmly on the Word of God thanks to this man. And uh, I think we can grow more now because we're in the right position to do this. And I think if we can positively with this, we can move forward and grow even, even more. We've had such a great spiritual leader, and uh, we're hoping and I'm sure that we're going to get another great spiritual leader. And, uh, and there's a church out there that needs him that uh, I don't know if they're in the same position we were 14 years ago, but, uh, but a church that needs his skills and his abilities and, uh, and him standing firmly and preaching the word of God. So I'm really confident about this. I'm really positive about this as much as I'm sad about losing a good friend. Uh, but I'm not going to lose him. I'll see you once in a while. So, but uh, any other questions about the process, I guess? That's the... Uh, the, the, the it's, so. One other good thing about this, um, my, there's, there's 10 district superintendents in Indiana, so a pastor can, uh, could move here from Evansville. Um, I could have moved to Evansville. <laughs> um, boy, Columbia City looks pretty nice <laughs> when, you, when you think of Evansville. <laughs> and uh, uh, Sarah is getting married here in three weeks. Um, she's going to be moving back to this, to, to this area. She would like to, to live in this area. And so we're thankful that we get to stay close. People have uh, kind of wondered about our family and how they're doing. Um, you know, when we told, we told the older kids um, earlier in the week, we told um, uh, Lydia and Isaac yesterday, um, told Isaac late last night because he'd tell the neighborhood. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, we had to tell him in bed, you know. Um, and... Uh, you know, uh, all, the, all the, kid, the older kids kept saying this, we're so thankful that this is the year. Um, number one, because it doesn't affect them. <laughs> <You know? laughs> they're, they're older. But also because Lydia's an eighth grader going into a freshman year. It's a natural, natural time for her uh, to be uh, moving on into a, a new place. Uh, imagine if it would be two years from now and she'd be a sophomore and going to be a junior and have to quit one school and, and go to another school, uh, that would be a pretty difficult. Um, and really, she, uh, she was fantastic with it. Um, so she, she trusts the Lord. Um, and Isaac was a little different. Um, Isaac was just like, can we live in a subdivision? I want to live in a subdivision, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because he loves his subdivision. <laughs> he loves his buddies, and he loves everything that's going on in there. And he literally said, can we live in a subdivision? I don't want to live out in the wild. <laughs> so uh, so uh, they, uh, he, they'll, they'll bounce back. Cheryl's probably... Um, Probably the most difficult to, it's going to be hard to get her away from here. She might still stay here. <laughs> you could pray for that. Um, you're like, you're, you're moving, I'm not, you know, that kind of thing. She loves it here and, you know, literally cannot think of anything else other than the wedding right now. So uh, it's, that's hard to, kind of hard to process that. Um, 
But uh, he, can I, can I, thank, thank you. Here's, here's another wonderful thing. There's 10 district superintendents. One of them went to school with me uh, at Asbury Seminary. And uh, he had a little girl while they were down at Asbury Seminary that did not, like, did not want to leave Wilmore, Kentucky, just like our Sarah, who was born there, did not want to leave Wilmore, Kentucky. She kept saying when we moved, uh, I want to go back home and take a bath, you know, and she didn't want to leave. So we got this little girl that was born in Wilmore, Kentucky, that was my district superintendent's um, uh, daughter. Uh, she is married now, uh, is expecting, and goes to our church. Um, so think about this for a second. Selfishly, think about this for a second. Uh, we have a district superintendent that's helping to select our pastor who is picking a pastor for his daughter and his grandson is going to come and son-in-law. And we're excited about that. There's some, there's some skin in the game for them. They, they care about this place. And... When I began to take the district superintendent around and just see, um, see this place, um, he just was amazed. And what I honestly feel is, you're probably going to say about six weeks into this, wow, I wish he'd gone a couple years earlier. <laughs> it would have been, been a lot, lot better. Can you do, the, can you, do you do these kind of things? So there's a change in leader. This leader needs you to pray for them. Needs you to pray. Needs you to pray. <clears throat> don't ever say things like, well, Fred didn't do it like that. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want them to do things like me. Whenever, whenever a pastor's been in a place or a leader's been in a place 14 years, some of my strengths come out and they come out and they benefit the whole system. Also, some of my weaknesses come out, and they've been kind of overlooked in the whole system, and they've been, they're, they're still sitting there, but you've been gracious enough to uh, kind of overlook and cover up my weaknesses, and there'll be a pastor with different strengths and weaknesses. And if you will, if you will do this, if you will submit to that pastor's strengths and protect that pastor's weaknesses, just like you did for me, then there'll be a very successful ministry, very successful ministry. Um, just, just love, 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 love. Um, care, o obey the Holy Spirit. Keep, um, keep in the Word of God yourself privately and keep coming in and worshiping. Um, you know who builds churches? Pastors don't build churches. People build churches. Like, when you reach out to one another, that's what, that's what builds a church. And so reach out. Um, um, like in the next year, the next two years, be as faithful as you can possibly be. Um, attend as, as much as you can possibly attend. Give as much as you can possibly give. Serve as much as you can possibly serve. Um, we told the staff earlier this week, and uh, Darla was, I don't mind if you go, but I'm, I'm sad to see all my volunteers leave. <laughs> you know, just got uh, our family. You know, we, so we, we're losing, not just me, but losing a, a, a big group. So there's a lot of volunteers and a, a lot of things that, that are needed in that. So I, I want you also to know the truth of how many churches are there. <laughs> One church. I'm not stopping building the church. I'm not stopping building the kingdom of God. I don't want you to stop building the kingdom of God. We're still partners. We're still building the kingdom of God. Um, and, and that's really important. Um, so friendship stays, stays the same. Friendship and partnership in the gospel stays the same on all that. So can I remind you of our scripture today? Um, how can you tell when God's doing something? Newness, freshness. Um, what do you have to do when you get something new? You have to trust. You have to say, God, um, uh, who, is the, who is the leader of this church? Jesus Christ. Jesus is the leader. And 
we just keep following him and, and uh, God's going to do something good in that. So.